Hello everyone, welcome back to Naomi's Bookshelf. Today we're doing a series review of Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I first picked up this series when I watched the movie, which is a great example of how the movie can push someone to read a book that they didn't necessarily want to read or didn't know anything about. Um, and then my book club was going to read it, so even better, I was forced to pick it up on a timely manner, and I read Crazy Rich Asians, and I really loved it. So then I bought the sequel, which is China Rich Girlfriend, and then I finally finished that one after much uh, delay. I finally finished it in December of 2022 of 2022. It is not that year yet. I wish it was. Um, anyways, I finished it in 2020 of December. And then I finished Rich People Problems in April. So I have finished out this series. I have really enjoyed my reading experience of these three books. And we're going to talk about it in this video. So let's get into a spoiler free overview of this series. And then I kind of want to talk about my feelings towards the series in case you've already read it and want to have some spoilery discussion or you want to just hear some spoilers and see if you want to get involved with this series. So the first thing you should know is that this series is a satire. It is not meant to be taken seriously. Um, this is about crazy rich people. <laughs> it's just about these people who have way too much money. Um, the series particularly, I'm going to put down the whole series, Let's talk about book one first, actually. So the first book follows Nick and Rachel as Nick comes from a very wealthy family and Rachel is an economics professor in New York and they are going back to China. Nope, not China. Um, Hong Kong. I can't remember. It's been a while since I read book one, but they're going back to Nick's hometown. I think it's actually Singapore. <laughs> Um, but they are going back to Singapore to be a part of Nick's childhood friend's wedding, or at least Nick is, and Rachel's going as his date, which is obviously a significant event. However, Rachel does not know that this is the wedding of the century in uh, Singapore, not only Singapore, but like Asia, and she is now center stage <laughs> in a big way. She also has no idea who Nick is and who he's related to. So she has no idea that she is suddenly a hot topic. This book really discusses how she is relating to all of these people and it's worth the read. Because of Rachel being so unknown in this world, it really is such a funny experience with her being like, these people are not why do they do these things? I don't get it. It also is like such a crazy dynamic of wealth that these people are throwing around. Also something of note with these books are, this is a great page for it actually. So there's these, the story, but then there's also these footnotes. So in case some of the dialogue trips you up, um, there's these statements that will be underneath and these it's just so funny when these things are said underneath uh, in the footnotes that are just making fun of this, these books. Honestly, uh, even in Rich People Problems, the last one I read, one of the characters went to the bathroom. And this character is quite a <laughs> despicable human being in some ways. If you read the books, you know who I'm talking about. And one of the footnotes says, if you assumed that he did not wash his hands, you were correct. And that's one of the footnotes. And so if you didn't read the footnotes, you didn't get that joke. But it was like, oh, great. And it just makes you chuckle. So um, the footnotes are a great asset to the series. Although I have heard that makes the audiobook hard to listen to because it pulls you out of the story to read the footnote. However, really recommend reading these books. Another thing about this series is that it follows a wide cast of characters. So you follow specifically Nick and Rachel, but through them you follow Nick's family. 
Um, you also follow Nick's cousin Astrid as she married this man named Michael, but they are having some marital troubles and she has a young son named Cassian, I believe. I did not listen to the audiobook, so my pronunciation might be off. Astrid is extremely wealthy and she is a fashion icon, but she is extremely unknown as her family have made a very intentional choice to protect their identity and their wealth. They are so wealthy that you cannot find them anywhere. So she is extremely wealthy beyond the point of wealth. Um, but this story also follows her. So it's kind of following Astrid along with Nick and Rachel in this whole overarching series. Um, so in this one, it follows that storyline and it just kind of goes from there throughout the, the trilogy. It is also a really interesting story about how wealth can impact relationships and dynamics. Um, Nick's grandmother is quite a stubborn woman and set in her ways with the past. She does not like Rachel, especially since she does not come from what she considers to be a good home. Um, and Rachel's mother was a single mother. So Nick's grandmother does not approve of Rachel and they do some digging and it is an interesting the family drama. It is really full of drama, full of intrigue. And it's all set with all this money, wealth, and all against this wedding. And um, it's interesting. I really enjoyed the series. I think it's a great one and every book gets less and less romantic, if you will. This book is definitely heavy on the romantic comedy, still satire, still definitely heavy on the uh, funny aspect, but as the books progress, it definitely goes into more literary fiction, which is something I really enjoy and satire still, but it goes ahead more into literary fiction. So that's something you need to know. I think it's really worth the read. I'd like to talk about some spoilers now uh, just to actually have a discussion about these books. So we're going to end with the spoiler free section. I really recommend reading this trilogy, this series, finishing them out. They are well worth it. I highly recommend. Um, in regards to spoilers now, I want to just kind of talk about what I really loved about this series because honestly, I gave all of them five stars. There's no negatives for me in this, except for the fact that there's language, but I attributed to certain characters because not all of the characters had the language. So that's fine. <laughs> Firstly, with Crazy Rich Asians, I feel like with Rachel being a newcomer to this whole scene and not knowing the culture at all, it really introduced us well to this strange world that um, Nick was from. And because of that, it wasn't so awful to be thrown into it. I also really loved how it showed this dramatic, strange new place. And I liked how the characters carried over from book to book. Also, I feel like the books didn't just stay in one location. It definitely transferred um, from Crazy Rich Asians to China Rich Girlfriend, where in this one, it set up the plot decently for China Rich Girlfriend and then China Rich Girlfriend progressed it and took its own identity. I thought that was a really clever way of making this its own book. It didn't just feel like a middle book syndrome. So in this one, when Rachel has discovered that her father actually isn't dead and is alive and has a son as well. So she has a brother and she's able to go meet her brother and her brother's girlfriend, Colette. That whole storyline was really interesting. I really enjoyed that mystery element um, and also the whole Colette storyline where she is really spoiled and treating her parents like crap. She is such an interesting millennial um, in this new kind of extremely rich, never has had to work for a penny and treats her parents really as if she's their boss because they're not representing the family wealth status well. I really liked this and I think the China Rich Girlfriend title works well. I also have to say I like the covers. I think they are so great at representing a unity between the books. Anyways, this series, um, the series, this book, book two, I think also did a great job of progressing Nick and Rachel's relationship. I think it moved well from being 
like dating to almost engaged to then moving on to married, newly married, because in this one, they just get married at the beginning. And then they're on their honeymoon. So this one was nice to see that progression and see them in a nice stable relationship instead of being in that tumultuous, will they stay together or won't they stay together from the first book. And then also seeing that familial relationship build between her and Carlton. I really liked seeing that. I wanted to see more of the Rachel and Carlton dynamic build through the series. And I liked that in book three as well. So this one I really enjoyed for that reason. And I liked seeing how they related to a new, completely, completely new area of uh, their world. And Nick, even then, he wasn't a known factor in China. So the fact that he was an unknown also was interesting because then he uh, was able to be kind of new on the scene too. I thought that was really interesting. And Carlton's backstory, that's where it really turned into more literary. Um, and then the whole poisoning scene was was good. I, I really liked this book and that's what actually made me push to pick up book three shortly after. So then book three, which I just finished, I thought was a perfect finale to the series. I really loved how this book wrapped everything up. So this one was really about how, um, how Astrid was really trying to get away from Michael, um, which was about time Michael was an awful, awful husband to her. Um, and that was actually shown in China Rich Girlfriend as well. So that progression was also really nice to see that. You really just wanted Astrid to get the best possible. You wanted the best for her the whole time. Um, and then actually another character who progressed well throughout this series, which I really liked was Kitty. So in this one, she is the girlfriend of Bernard, I think is his name. And then in this one, she's married to Alistair, right? And, um, and she is trying to get her daughter, which was a great storyline. I really liked seeing her storyline in that. And you really grew to like Kitty, at least I did. I really enjoyed her storyline and I really wanted to uh, her to succeed. I wanted her to have her daughter back. I wanted them to be free. And then in this one, she's married to Colette's father, which was like, wait, what? I was so confused at the beginning of Rich People Problems. But because there's such a gap between the two books, I wasn't quite sure what was going on. But in this one, so Carlton's girlfriend, Colette, is a complete spoiled rich girl. But in this one, um, Kitty married her father in like the years after this event. So in this one, there's this whole dynamic of Kitty trying to outdo Colette, but Colette is marrying this Duke. He's a he's nobility from England and she's always outdoing Kitty. And so there's this whole dynamic, but then at the same time, Nick is trying to go back home because his grandmother is dying. And it's kind of interesting to me how the whole series started off with a wedding and then this series ended with a funeral because then his grandmother does die after she sees Nick finally, because Eddie, who I hated because he's a good proper villain, um, because he wouldn't let Astrid or Nick come in because he told everyone that grandma didn't want to see him. But that was a lie. Anyways, um, so when she finally got to see Nick, then she passed away like the next day, which is so sad. Anyways, um, then yeah, so she saw Nick and then the whole estate's divided and, and then it's all about them trying to kind of come to resolution. And the whole aspect of that was really, how do you resolute this thing? Because the whole family is divided between this money and these estates, what they feel like they've earned and how best to get it back. So I feel like the trilogy as a whole did really well. They really came full circle. In book one, you were introduced to all of the main players, essentially. You were introduced to Kitty, who at that time was a very bad actress, just trying to date the right people in order to marry up. 
And then in the end, she ends up being an extremely important donor to keep the family home running as a charitable um, location and a heritage site. So no one can actually come in, flatten it and destroy it and turn it into apartment buildings. So it was just a really interesting full circle. Also, it was really interesting to see how the whole time in this book, they were kept pressing for grandchildren from Rachel and Nick. And they were like, in our own time, don't push us. And, um, and then at the very end, it was like, yeah, we're, we're pregnant. But it was like, you know, a year after the events of the book, it was like an epilogue, which I really liked that. But also, I liked how it showed that the couple from the first book um, were not you know, having kids really easily, even though they were pressured to, they were struggling to have children. They had miscarriages and that was mentioned in this book, not the second one. So in this one, they really were struggling. And then it was also talking about the mental health of that, um, and going to counseling. So I thought it was really great. I really loved the whole series. And those are just kind of my favorite things about this series. I really did love how it talked about money and how it does not help. It often can hurt relationships. Um, I really like the continuity of, uh, the continuity, how the unity, the continuousness of the characters from book to book, but also how there was a time gap between each one and how it felt like a good storyline. It felt authentic and how no one felt rushed, maybe is the way to say it. Um, I really did just appreciate how it worked. And then even Astrid's story, because I feel like in Astrid's storyline, you had the first book where she was struggling with her marriage to Michael. Book two is where she was still struggling. And book three is when she was finally done. And she was with Charlie kind of the whole time trying to figure out if she should stay with Michael or leave him. And then book three, she's like, I'm done. I'm going to be with Charlie. And then at the end of book three, she decides that she is done because Michael's been spying on her. He's been really blackmailing her and it's not good. Um, and then the way that ended, I just really liked how, you know, they kind of took it at their own pace and they didn't just get married at the end of the book. I liked that. So five stars. I really liked this series and I am so glad I finally finished it. So that is my review of Crazy Rich Asians. Please let me know down in the comments who's your favorite character from the Crazy Rich Asians series. Or if you plan on finishing the series out, I'm sorry if I spoiled anything for you because I love them a lot. I'm so glad I finally finished this series. Anyways, I hope that you will like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you are new here. And I will see you next time with another video. Bye for now.